Let's sing that last all together. Come, desire of nations, come, fix in us thy humble home. Rise, a woman's conquering seed, bruise in us a serpent's head. Adam's likeness now he fades. Stem thine image in its place. Go ahead and be seated, if you will. The ushers will be coming and um, get the offering tonight. But I do want to take just a minute and recognize some folks this evening. Uh, good to have Paul here tonight. How about that? And uh, got to come for the cantata. Good to see Paul here this evening. God bless you, Paul. That's great. Uh, surprised your daughter. And uh, that was our secret. We didn't let her in on that. And uh, that's great. Good to see you here. And uh, that's wonderful. Brother Bowman is here, Lawrence Bowman, back there with his mother, and uh, good to see him. Uh, he's been in Mexico helping out at an orphanage down there and uh, been enjoying his updates and reports. Uh, God's used him in a great way there, but it's good to see him at Christmas time and delight that he came tonight. Good to see you and your mom. Thank you for being here in the service. That's great. And Brother Di, good to see you here tonight, too. Uh, Grandpa Di here to see the uh, his grandchildren. I guess uh, grandchildren and great-grandchildren, huh? Uh, in the going on. That's that's fantastic. That's great. And uh, that's good. Good to see Van Gelder's here tonight, too. Brother Ed just had some surgery on Friday, and he's in church on Sunday night. That's pretty good. And uh, it's great to see you, brother. And uh, glad you made it in. All right. Wonderful. And uh, we have some radio listeners back here. Put your hand in the air. Uh, these this, this three right here, these folks right here, words to encourage. There you go. And uh, they came to, to see the cantata this evening, and uh, glad to have you folks with us tonight. Thank you so much. That's wonderful. All right, is there anybody else that I've missed that you're here this evening and you're visiting? We got somebody over here? Oh, that's right. Uh, go ahead, Xavier. Introduce Felicia's brother. Or Felicia can introduce her brother either way. This is Felicia's brother, Pete. Good to have you tonight, my friend. They're great. That's right. I met him just before we started tonight. That's great. Wonderful. All right. Mary Lou. Phone rings, answer it. All right. All right. Let's, uh, we want to take the offering tonight. And if you're, if you're a guest here tonight and you have the, the welcome card, if you'll put that in the plate when it goes by, we appreciate you doing that. Reminder, Wednesday night will be the midweek service as usual at 7 o'clock. And we'll observe the Lord's table Wednesday night together. And uh, that'll be a special time. I'm going to talk about Bethlehem a little bit on Wednesday night, the house of bread, and uh, how that all worked into God's plan. And uh, I think we'll, it'll be an enjoyable service for you Wednesday evening, 7 o'clock. Uh, for our midweek service, all right? Let's pray. We'll ask God's blessing on our offering this evening, and uh, let's have Brother Lindemann lead us in our prayer tonight. Would you, Brother Chuck? Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord, for loving us the way you do, Lord, for sending your Son, the greatest gift, Lord, that we could ever receive. Lord, thank you for allowing us to live in a great country, free people, Lord. We just want to thank you for that. Thank you for your word, Father, the word of God, Lord. Where would we be without it, Father? We just want to thank you for that. And Lord, thank you for the folks that came here tonight. Lord, just pray you'll bless their hearts tonight. As pastor preaches tonight, Lord, just give them wisdom, power, and understanding, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be attentive to your word. We want to give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
Amen. Thank you. Take your Bible this evening, if you would, please, and turn to 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6, please. We are going to read verses 17 through 19, 17, 18, and 19, three verses this evening. We'll read them responsively. We'll begin together on 17, then I'll read 18, and we'll end together with verse number 19. And as our custom usually is, let's stand together to read the scripture. All of us standing, please, to read God's word. And let's begin together on verse 17 of 1 Timothy chapter 6. Ready? Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. And let's pray together. Father, add your blessing, please, to the reading of our scripture here this evening. And Father, I pray that you would continue to speak to our hearts tonight. Lord, thank you for what we've already heard and what we've already seen. Uh, And Lord, how you've already dealt with our hearts. Thank you for the wonderful job by the choir and those who played the roles in in the drama portion of the cantata. Father, I pray that you would continue to to minister to each individual here this evening. Open our understanding of the scripture tonight and help us to to glean the truth that you have for us here this evening. Holy Spirit, do what only you can do here in our midst here tonight. Be our teacher. Help me to say what ought to be said and leave unsaid what doesn't need to be said. Lord, I pray that you would move up and down these rows and in in and out of the aisle. And Lord, stop at every seat. Minister to the people as only you can do. Lord, I pray we'll leave in a little bit saying it sure was good to have been in the house of the Lord this evening. What you're going to do, Lord, I'll thank you in advance. For I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, you may be seated. An elderly woman decided it was too much and too much trouble to try to get all her kids and all her grandkids Christmas presents. So she decided the easiest thing to do would be just send a check in the Christmas card. And uh, in the card, she just put, buy your own gifts. The problem was, she got the cards already and mailed the cards out and forgot to put the check in. So every kid, imagine their surprise opening their card from grandma and all it had in there was, buy your own presents. (laughs) That might not that that been a Christmas to remember. I'm not sure how much they would have enjoyed it. But I want to talk to you this evening on this subject of how you can enjoy Christmas. You know, you only have five days. Friday will be Christmas. And I wonder sometimes with all the busyness and the baking and the gift wrapping and the shopping and family get togethers, do you take the time to enjoy Christmas? So often, Christmas becomes a bother rather than a blessing. And a lot of times, it becomes full of heartaches instead of hallelujahs. And sometimes people are more relieved when it's over, and they almost endure it rather than enjoy it. I want to help you tonight, I think, if we can notice the words in verse number 17. At the very end of verse 17, it says that you're to trust in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. He gives us richly all things to enjoy. And I just want to give you three simple ways that I think you can enjoy Christmas. All right. And by the way, God has given us a time to celebrate His birth, and so we ought to apply that principle to this that we ought to enjoy it. Amen? Uh, and so let's enjoy the time and not just endure the time. And here's three, three simple thoughts and then we'll go home. All right. Number one is found in Luke chapter 18. Would you turn over there please? Luke chapter 18. Matthew, Mark, Luke. Third book of the New Testament. 
Luke 18, notice with me, verse number 15. They brought unto him also infants that he would touch them, but when his disciples saw it, they rebuked him. But Jesus called them unto him and said, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise enter therein. The first step to the first principle, I guess, as to enjoying Christmas is become a child again. Become a child again. Um, you know, again, after some last minute Christmas shopping with her grandchildren, Grandma was trying to get them all into the car when four year old Jason said, Grandma, Susie has something in her pocket. She reached in and pulled out a brand new hair barret, a hair, hair thing that goes in your hair. What do they call those? Barrette? Is that how you say that? Barrette? You can tell, I, tell I'm really acquainted with those. She took Susie, that grandma immediately took Susie back in the store to put the item back where she found it and to have to confess that to the store manager. And uh, the manager looked down and uh, before they could say anything and said, have you, kids been so, have you kids been good so Santa will bring you some presents? And Jason said, well, I've been good, but my sister just robbed your store. <laughs> oh, sometimes, sometimes you hear people say, well, Christmas is for kids. Christmas is for kids. And you have to, you have to stop and think about that for a minute. I wonder if they mean... Have I gotten too old to celebrate the birth of the Savior? Have I gotten beyond celebrating the fact that God came, became flesh and dwelt among us? Maybe there's a little disappointment. Maybe there's a little sadness because they don't enjoy it like they used to when they were a child. You know, Jesus oftentimes talked about becoming like a little child. In fact, when Nicodemus came to him at night and wanted to know how he could go to heaven how he could know he, had, he could have eternal life, Jesus said to him, you have to be born again. Nicodemus, of course, didn't understand that. He goes, you mean i got to you know, become a baby again and be born by my mother again? And Jesus said, no, 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 no. He was talking about a spiritual birth. He's not talking about another physical birth. But he was saying, except you become like a little child, have the, the, the faith of a little child, you'll not enter the kingdom of God. You have to have that faith and the childlike faith that children only have. And they're the model for how important and how easy it is for us to enter into heaven. Now, let me, when Jesus says become like a little child, let me tell you something I don't think he meant. And that is I don't believe he meant that you have to be childish. There is a difference between being childlike and being childish. Okay? Okay. Uh, you done, I don't think he's talking about uh, refusing to grow up, okay? Um, uh, children aren't always little angels, <laughs> and, and the Lord isn't discouraging you from maturing, all right? He does talk about that in the Bible as well. Uh, when we become a man, we can put away childish things. But, but in, in fact, that's part of our problem in our day. We have too many adults that haven't grown up. And uh, when they don't get their way, they throw temper tantrums or... Uh, uh, get, show a lot of selfishness and unforgiveness and they want to uh, do all sorts of things. I won't chase that rabbit too far, but that's, uh, that's what we get. And despite of all the, the negative things that you lay aside as you grow up, there are some things you ought to hold on to. As you mature, there are certain things you still ought to hang on to. And one of them is dependence. Dependence. You know what children need? Children need somebody to take care of them. Children need somebody uh, to do some things for them that they cannot do themselves. They're depending on the adults to do some things for them that they know they can't do. And don't lose your dependence on God as you grow up. If you have good parents, if you're a child here tonight and you have good parents, you're not worrying about food to eat. You're not worrying about clothes to wear. Uh, you're not worrying about any of those things, or how you're going to get to school or get home from school or anything like that. That's really not anything you worry about. You just depend on that person you call mom or dad that they're going to take care of that for you. And you expect that from them. And, and just as the child depends on their parents to take care of them, 
God says we are supposed to depend on Him to take care of us in childlike faith. He said in Matthew chapter 7, He said, what man is there among you if he, if he asks a son, remember He said if He asks for His son, His son asks Him for a piece of bread, is He going to give him a stone? He said if He asks a fish, is He going to give him a serpent? He said, he's, he said, listen, if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to you and me? And that's what he's teaching us. Saying, man, if, if, if you know how to take care of your children, don't you think I know how to take care of mine? Don't you think God can take care of us? Uh, why can't we be dependent upon Him? And so we want, I don't want to lose that dependence. In all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy path. So let, d d don't lose the dependence of a child. And then secondly, don't lose the wonder of a child. The wonder of a child. You know, children see the world a little different, don't they? They'll stop and they'll be amazed at the caterpillar spinning a cocoon. They'll be amazed at a falling star or, or uh, beauty. They see beauty in things that sometimes we grown-ups take for granted. How many child has come running into the house all excited because they picked a flower for mom and it's a dandelion. And we think, well, at least we got one less one in the yard. But I mean, you know, they're, they're, they, they just think that's marvelous. When they hear Bible stories, you tell them the Bible stories as they're young of David and Goliath or Daniel and the lion's den and they're fascinated with those. And you can, say, you can tell them the same story every night and that's the one they want to hear. They're just amazed and they're in wonder at those stories of the Bible. And they don't want to lose it. We lose our, as we grow older sometimes, we lose our ability to have a wonder. Just an amazement at what God's doing. We're kind of like, we're like Moses who won't even stop at the burning bush. We just walk right on by. Oh yeah, the bush is burning. And we take it for granted. Things that God does. We hurry on through life and we're busy and we're, we're on a fast pace and we miss the things that God puts in our life that He designed to make us wonder about His greatness and His glory. And we miss it. And that's how Christmas is, isn't it? Isn't that what people do? We get so caught up in everything else that goes on and and oh yeah, there's the baby in the manger. And we never stop and think, just who is that baby in the manger? Why is he here? Who is he? Why did he come? Whatever happened to him? Did he grow up? What did he do when he grew up? How did he die? Did he die? If he died, did he stay dead? And if he didn't stay dead, where did he go? These are questions that you ought to think about. And by the way, when you investigate them and you find the answers, you'll be filled with wonder. It's an amazing, amazing story that, that, that oftentimes people just let it go right past them. Can I challenge you that you can enjoy Christmas by just becoming a child again? And trying to look through it through the eyes of a child. I'm not talking about going back to childish ways. I'm talking about being a little more dependent on Him. Dependent on God than what you have been. Talking about stopping and, and, and making sure that you look around and enjoy the wonder of God's creation. The wonder of the world God has placed us in. Becoming a child again is one of the first ways you can begin to enjoy the Christmas season. Let me give you number two. Number two is found in Acts chapter 20 and verse number 35. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, then Acts chapter 20 and verse number 35. Not only can we become like a little child, but here in Acts 20, Paul is saying goodbye to the Ephesian elders and the leaders of the church at Ephesus. It's a very emotional uh, goodbye. And Paul says this in verse 35. Notice with me. I have showed you all things, and that so, how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak, and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how He said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. 
It was Louisa May Alcott that said Christmas wouldn't be Christmas without any presents. And that's what's wrong with Christmas. Some people would gripe or complain about. It's all about giving and receiving presents. But I would say that's not really what's wrong with Christmas. The fact that you're giving and receiving isn't the problem. Here's the key. The key is, if you want to enjoy Christmas, you've got to rediscover the joy of giving. You've got to rediscover the joy of giving. Jesus said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Sometimes we get that mixed up. Sometimes we get the idea that it's just as good to receive. In fact, sometimes we think it's better to receive than it is to give. And we get the words of Jesus mixed up. Our culture is a lot more into getting than it is to giving. Kids make lists of what they want to get for Christmas. Instead of what they want to give for Christmas. This play this evening and you found that here's a, here's a fellow reminiscing back to 1949 from his childhood. And listen, it's not the Christmas he remembers where he got a bunch of things. The Christmas he remembers is when they gave all the money they had away. When they worked and they labored and they collected and they served others and then they gave it to a missionary. That's the Christmas he remembers. You see, so often we get focused on what we get instead of what we give. Folks will go to Walmart and spend thousands of dollars on presents for ourselves or our family and then walk out the door and throw a couple quarters in the Salvation Army. Little tin that's out there. Now we don't mind buying presents for some people but they better buy me one. We get them one and they don't get us one. Guess who's not getting one next year? You see, that's the, that's the, the, the game we play a little bit. And we do all that and we spend the money and we, we do that and we, we, we expect to get some gifts and then we come to church and pastor says, hey, we're taking a special offering. You say, oh man, he wants money again? Be careful how we get more wrapped up in receiving than we do giving. The truth of the matter is we, we really do exchange gifts. That's where the, 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 the problem comes in. What Jesus was saying and what Paul was saying, it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. When the joy you get is in giving. I mean, you think about it. How many times have you received a gift or your children received a gift, which they'll do in five days, and they'll unwrap it and they'll be excited about it, and within two months, the dog chewed it up and it's no good and nobody remembers what it was anyway. You've all had the experience, I'm sure, with little ones that open up a present and you look in about an hour later and they're not playing with the present, they're playing with the box it came in. And you thought, I could have just bought a box. And he'd have been just as happy. You see... Most of you are hard-pressed to even remember what you received last Christmas. I'll tell you what you don't forget. You give, a toy, you give a toy to a child that doesn't have anything this Christmas. Doesn't have any mom or dad. Give food to somebody or give some money to feed somebody who otherwise would go hungry at Christmas. Share, with what, share what you have with someone who everybody else has forgotten about. When you give your time to visit a shut-in who's drowning in loneliness. Thought about that Saturday as we went caroling into the nursing home. How many folks there, that's the only visit they're going to get Christmas time. Know about you, but I, I hope you looked in their eyes a few times. And you just see they're, they're, they're just lonely people. What a, what a blessing it is to come to try to be a blessing to people like that. An American Christian was living in one of the strictly Muslim countries of the Middle East and it was Christmas Day and of course there was nowhere to attend church or no way he'd be allowed to attend church. 
But he wanted to do something to celebrate Christmas, even though he was in a foreign land. And he wasn't sure what he could do, so he just decided he went down to the store, he bought candy, and he just began to pass it out to children on the streets. What a perfect way to illustrate Christmas to people who know nothing of Christ. How? By giving to others. Giving to others. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. When you give, you're doing what God did at Christmas. He gave. Say, I want to be like God. I want to be God-like. Then you have to be giving. And rediscover the spirit of giving. And you know, as you... As you grow and as you mature in your Christian life, you, you, you have to come to the point where even Christmas is... Listen, anytime, it's not about what you get, it's about what you give. And the joy you see that you can bring to others. If, if receiving makes me happy, then my happiness is only dependent on when you'll give me something. But if my joy and my happiness is dependent on my giving then I can be happy anytime I want to be. I can be joyful anytime I want to be. Because I can give. And I can try to meet somebody's need. Oh, you know, the second way you enjoy Christmas, rediscover the joy of giving. Rediscover the joy of giving. Real joy comes from a giving heart. Become a child again. Rediscover the joy of giving. And then I want you to go to the book of Philippians for number three. You doing all right? Okay, we're not far from done. Philippians chapter 3, or I'm sorry, Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, verse 14. The Bible says, Do all things without murmurings and disputings. Boy, there's a verse to put up in your, in your home, huh? Uh, do all things without mur- we, we could we could pull over and park at that verse a while, but we'll move on. Verse 15 is where we're headed tonight. That ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. The third way, number one, you become a child again. Number two, you'd rediscover the joy of giving. And number three is you turn the lights on. Okay, I'm not talking about the lights on in nobody's home. Okay, I'm talking about turn the lights on. What I mean by that is, it, listen, Jesus said here, we're lights. He is the light of the world. But then He said, we're to let our lights so shine before men. They'll see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. Turn the light on. You know, there's a lot of lights that go on at Christmas time. And when you see those lights and, and, and every one of the lights and you admire them whether they're on a tree or whether they're on someone's house or whether they're uh, decorating something, listen, it all reminds you that your light's supposed to shine. And, and we're in the midst of a dark world. And we are. But the darker it is, the brighter the light ought to shine. And the more clearly it ought to be seen. In other words, He wants us to live differently. He wants us to, to obvi- be an obvious difference. There ought to be an obvious difference between someone who walks in darkness and someone who has the light of the world living within them. Ought to be obvious. And it ought to be obvious as you get together, they ought to be as obvious as light and dark. And Jesus says we ought to shine. If the people we work with live selfishly and carelessly without thinking about the Lord, then we ought to live differently than that. We need to, that's why the Bible says to be blameless and harmless and without rebuke, shining. No other time of the year do Christians have a better opportunity to shine than during the Christmas season. <coughs> to show the Lord Jesus in our lives. Whether it's where you go to school, whether it's where you work, whether it's family get-togethers when people really don't understand what your belief's all about. And what you really, what 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 you really uh, believe in your heart, and how you really live, they don't understand what's happening in your life. Because some people are celebrating a birth of a baby, and yet they they don't know what that's all about. It doesn't affect their life. It doesn't change them any other day of the year, just one, when they have Christmas. And the rest of the time, they don't really think about the baby in the manger. They don't think about Jesus Christ. They don't think about trying to please Him. It doesn't affect how they live and it doesn't affect how they're going to die. 
That's the tragedy. How are they going to see any difference? How are they going to know there's anything different if we don't let our light shine? God didn't put us into the world to blend into the world. God didn't put us into the world to be like the world. He said, you are in the world, but you are not of the world. And we ought to be different enough that folks would look and say, hey, there's something different about you. What's going on in your life? And, 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 and can you tell me what's different? I'm not talking about being self-righteous. I'm not talking about being holier than thou. It's simply, I'm simply saying we ought to show what Jesus Christ, what the difference Jesus Christ makes in our life. It ought to be evident that He makes a difference in our life in the way we live day by day. To point people to the light. And that doesn't happen by accident. That happens as we prepare to shine our light. And we prepare to let others see the light in us. You know, um, this is a time of year normally, and, and by the way, I'm okay with not being normal, okay? But I mean, this is the time of year normally when there's been snow and uh, other stuff and they throw the salt on the roads and all that stuff, and as you drive, you get the spray from the salt and the stuff on the roads, and you know what it does? It coats your headlights. You ever gotten in your car before and, and you get on, some of the lights are automatic now, you get in, you look and say, are my headlights on? And you can't really tell. And you get out and they're on, but they're so covered with stuff, you have to get something and clean them off. Why? So the light will shine. So you can see where you're headed and other people can see that you're coming. And listen to me, friend. Our light needs to shine. And we need to let the light of Christ come through us. What, 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 what blocks it? What begins to make it darken? Sin in our lives. Allowing things in our life that don't need to be there. So what do we do? We confess our sin. And the Bible says He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us. He cleanses the lens off so that the light will shine through again and folks can see the light. Say, oh, what I do is my business. I don't do that. That's up to me. No, 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 no. It's hurting your light. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt somebody else because they won't see the light. They won't see the light shine for them. So the challenge is, let's shine bright at Christmas. Hey, when you go to the family get-togethers, when you go to the, 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 the friends and the, the, the people who have you over, listen, let your light shine. Don't, don't be ashamed of the light. Don't put it under the bushel. This is a true story. It was two weeks before Christmas and a nine-year-old girl was walking with her friend down the street. Two of them were talking about what they hoped to get for Christmas. They stopped to talk to an old man named Harry who was on his knees pulling weeds around a large oak tree. He wore a frayed woolen jacket and a pair of worn garden gloves. His fingers were sticking out the ends. They were almost turning blue from the cold. As Harry responded to the girls, he told them he was getting the garden shape as a Christmas present to his mother who had passed away several years before. His eyes brimmed with tears as he patted the old oak tree my mother was all I had. She loved her yard and her trees. So I do this for her every Christmas. His words touched the girls and soon they were down on their hands and knees helping him to weed around the trees. It took the three of them the rest of the day to complete the task and when they finished, Harry pressed a quarter into each of the girls' hands and said, I wish I could give you more, but it's all I've got right now. The girls had often passed that way before and as they walked, they remembered that the house was always shabby, no wreath, no Christmas tree, no other decorations, just the lonely figure of Harry sitting by his curtainless window. The quarter seemed to burn a hole of guilt in one little girl's mind as they returned to their homes. The next day she called her friend and they agreed to put their quarters in a jar marked Harry's Christmas present. And then they began to seek out small jobs to earn more. Every nickel, every dime, every quarter they earned went into the jar. And then two days before Christmas, they'd earned enough money to buy new gloves and a Christmas card for Harry. Christmas Eve found them on Harry's doorstep singing Christmas carols. When he opened the door, they presented him with the gloves wrapped in pretty paper, the card and some pumpkin pie still warm from the oven. With trembling hands, he tore the paper from the gloves. And then to their astonishment, 
he held them up to his face and he wept. You know, you can survive the Christmas season and complain and grumble, talk about the bother, yawn when you hear Luke 2 read again, be glad when the whole thing's over, or you can enjoy Christmas. You can enjoy Christmas by becoming a child again, by rediscovering the blessing of giving, and by shining like lights in a dark world. What will be your choice tonight? I don't know about you. I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to enjoy it. And, and there's, you have to make that determination. God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Let's pray, shall we? Father, we bow before you now this evening. Lord, I thank you again for the plainness of your word. Thank you, Father, for this wonderful promise that you give us all things richly to enjoy. And certainly we ought to enjoy celebrating the birth of our Savior coming into the world. And Lord, tonight I pray that you'll use the encouragement that is found in your word of becoming like a child again, of rediscovering the joy of giving and not receiving. And letting our light shine for the Lord Jesus. I pray you'd help us to enjoy this season. And may others see why we can enjoy it. And Father, I pray for those in the room tonight who they know about the babe in the manger. But they don't know that he's the savior of the world. And that he came and lived a sinless life. And then hung and died on a cross as a payment for our sins. He was buried. And you raised him from the dead three days later. And you said, I'm accepting my son's payment for the sin of mankind. And Lord, I pray that they too would accept Christ's payment on their behalf. And they would receive him as their savior. You said as many as received him. To them you gave the power to become the children of God, the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. I pray that they'd receive the gift of God, which is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. I'll finish the prayer in just a moment. But right now, with your heads bowed, just between you and God, I wonder how many folks in the room tonight would say, Pastor, there's a time in my life when I knew I was a sinner and I knew I needed a Savior. And I knew that Jesus Christ was the Savior I needed. And there's a time when I called on Jesus and I asked Him to forgive my sins and I asked Him to be my Savior. And I received that gift of eternal life. And Pastor, I know that I'm saved tonight. I know I have the gift of eternal life. Would you slip your hand up as a testimony to that and say, Pastor, that's me. I know I have eternal life. That's me. All right, you may put it down. So somebody here tonight would say, Pastor, I, I can't say that for sure. Would you allow me to pray for you? Again, we'll not embarrass you. Nobody will call, out, call you out in any way. But I would like to pray for you that God would continue to de deal with your heart and he'll open your understanding to that. Let me pray for you tonight. Would you slip your hand up and say, Pastor, that's me. I, I couldn't raise my hand the first time and say I'm sure, but I'd like to raise it now. I'm not sure. Is there someone like that? Just put it up and put it back down. I'll see it. Someone like that? God bless you. Thank you. Is there anyone else to join this one? You couldn't raise your hand the first time. You'll raise it this time. Could I pray for you? I wonder how many Christians tonight would say, Preacher, God spoke to my heart this evening about being able to enjoy Christmas. Maybe, maybe it's becoming a little childlike again. Not childish, childlike. Maybe it's just getting that wonder back again. Maybe it's that dependence again. 
Maybe it's focusing on giving and not receiving. And you ought to put the giving into action. It is more blessed to give than it is to receive. Maybe you need to let your light shine. Maybe that's what God spoke to your heart about. But I wonder how many believers here tonight say, Preacher, God dealt with my heart tonight. Pray for me, please. Would you slip your hand up, Christian? Yes. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may put them down. In a moment, I'll pray and we'll have your invitation. If God has dealt with your heart tonight, I want you to respond to Him. Altars open for you to come and to kneel down and do business with God. If you're here tonight and you couldn't say, I know for sure that when I die, I'll go to heaven. I know I have eternal life. If you can't say that for sure, we have folks here who've, who have been trained to take a Bible and they can show you from the Bible how you can know for sure that you have eternal life. How you can receive God's gift to you of eternal life through Jesus Christ. Best decision you'll ever do. The best decision you'll ever make is to receive His gift of eternal life. While others are coming to pray, just slip from your seat. Meet me here at the front. I'll have one of those folks take a Bible and they'll show you how you can know you have eternal life. Heavenly Father, thank you for speaking to our hearts this evening. Thank you for these hands that have been uplifted indicating you've spoken to our heart. And Lord, I pray that your will will be done now in every heart and life. I pray for the Christians who just want to bow the knee and say, God, I want to enjoy this time of year and I want to enjoy celebrating the birth of the Savior. I want my light to shine. I want to enjoy giving rather than receiving. And I, don't, I want to be like a child again in wonder and amazement at what God does and what God did for me and in dependence upon Him. Lord, may Your will be done in the life of those who need to know that they have eternal life. May they come. And may they have their name written down in heaven on December 20th, 2015. Have your way now in this invitation. I'll thank you for it. With your heads bowed, would you stand to your feet? As you stand to your feet, our pianist will play. Brother Bob's going to sing. As God has spoken to your heart tonight, you respond to him while Bob sings. That's right. seated for a minute if you would please appreciate your attention this evening and um, got a couple things I want to do before we let you go tonight um, Lisa come over here for a minute Lisa does a great job with our piano playing and worked really hard on the cantata and all the special music and your your choir members went together and we got you some flowers and they got you a nice card here that we want to just express our appreciation to you, Lisa. God bless you. Thank you very much. Amen. Amen. Wonderful job. We're praying for the Linkies. They're uh, leaving uh, tomorrow morning and uh, heading to New York for Christmas time. So pray for their safety as they travel up to New York and be heading back uh, probably on Saturday next week. 
So uh, I prayed for a safe trip for them, all right? Amen. And, uh, and then the choir also took up a collection from Brother Bob. And uh, Bob does a tremendous job. Amen. And uh, he's, we are blessed to have him uh, at our church. You know, uh, so often music is a, is a hard thing to, to stay on top of at a church. And uh, it wouldn't happen. It wouldn't happen as easily as it does without Bob Reed at Bible Baptist Church. And great job with the choir, as always, and uh, picking out the music and working hard on this uh, cantata. And Bob, your choir members, took up a collection for you. And we've got a card and some gift cards in there for you that you and your family will enjoy. And I uh, just want to let you know we appreciate you very much. Uh, and, uh, Well, I'm glad I came tonight. Yeah. Hope you are glad you came tonight as well, and uh, appreciate you being here. And uh, let's stand together. We'll have a word of prayer. Hope you have a great Christmas week. If you have opportunity, make sure you're back here Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. Uh, we'll have a wonderful service together. All the kids will be in, everybody together uh, Wednesday evening. Uh, that'll serve as our uh, Christmas Eve service, if you will. And uh, pray for those. Uh, the others, my others, you might be traveling uh, during that time. Let's pray for one for another uh, during the holiday season, all right? Okay? Let's pray together, shall we? Father, we bow before you now this evening. Lord, thank you for your goodness to us. Thank you for a wonderful day, a wonderful evening here in the house of the Lord. Thank you for the people of God that are gathered in this place. Lord, we, we are just honored to be able to serve you with our lives. Without you, we could do nothing. Without you, there'd be no reason for us to even live. Lord, you give us all things richly to enjoy. It sure is wonderful to be a Christian. And Father, we love you and we thank you so much for sending your son, Jesus, into this world to live a perfect, sinless life and then become the sacrifice on the cross of Calvary for our sin. Lord, help us never get over the wonder of it all that God would love me. Thank you for each one of these that have made our way, especially our guests this evening. Thank you so much for them being in our service tonight. Dismiss us now with your care. Please watch over as we go our separate ways. And Father, as we leave this place tonight, make us mindful you go with us. And may we let our light shine before men. They'll see our good works and glorify our Father, which is in heaven. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. 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 We're going to sing Wish You Merry Christmas. All right, let's sing it. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Ready? We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Good tidings we bring to you and your King. Good tidings for Christmas and a Happy New Year. God bless you. You are dismissed.